Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. And today with us, here is Mr. Sayyam, who is the trainer for the InfoSec train. He has delivered ample amount of batches for different security and management level certification. So first of all, let us welcome Sayyam here. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing great. And thank you, Rishabh, sir, for inviting me. OK, so for those guys who is a bit new here, Sayyam is one of the trainer in InfoSec Train, and he's been in the same field for quite some years now. And he has delivered a very good amount of batches for the CEH. Now, let's just go ahead and get some idea from him about the CEH and how does he and the other trainers from the InfoSec Train, they deliver the training. Sayyam, kindly give us some idea about the CEH first. Yes. So basically, see it, it stands for Certified Ethical Hacker, which is from EC Council. It is one of the best offensive courses for all those who are trying to switch to information security, as well as interested in, you can say, red team or penetration testing. So here you learn about how to find vulnerabilities and exploit them to take advantage of it. And basically, it has multiple sections uh, for ethical hacking, like for cloud, IoT, mobile, web application, and networking, and so on. Okay. So, you know, it sounds really interesting that someone will be going on the offensive security, learning about the, you know, bit basics of the hacking. And so you have been into this field for quite some years now. And I personally believe that training was mostly done in person. But since the pandemic, you know, this pandemic hit the world, you know, this COVID, it has changed the dynamic about most of the things all, all around the globe. And, you know, training is something that is, we will say, is impacted by this as well. So, you know, when we talk about the online training, so this is the never ending challenge. So how did you guys cope up with it and prepare your infrastructure for the online training? I agree with you. Training was mostly based on on-site or in-person, and it was more simplified. So we were able to directly interact with participants, you know, and help them on spot. Like whatever the queries were there, we tried to resolve it right over there. So having said that, since we are in cybersecurity, information security world, and we always learn about disaster recovery strategies and planning, right? So we got a problem and we tried to solve it, doesn't it? So making everything online wasn't an easy task in the starting, to be very honest. But we have a great team and together we were able to manage it more efficiently. Uh, let me tell you that post COVID, everything is going good and positive for us. Making everything online, you know, uh, like for that to provide an infra, what we did, we have our cloud through which we provide labs and machines to the participants. We do help them to create you know, such environments in their own local machines or in their systems so that it can be you know, uh, with them for the longer period of time and whenever they want to practice, you know, they can do it, right? And we provide them a meeting link basically so that you know, where we can take that particular session. You know, so entire session is delivered over that meeting link and we share our screens and we help them to you know, with their queries uh, right, right away. So we assist them in learning and solving the machines. If they are stuck somewhere in between, right? And if they have any problem, so we ask them to share the screen and we try to uh, resolve the queries and we, we try to assist them in a more better way, right? So yes, obviously some challenges are there, but we have a couple of tactics in the pocket, you can say, in order to tackle it. Okay, great. So as you mentioned that there are challenges like you might not know the whether participant is there or not right whether they are listening to you or doing some other work because generally people are less attentive in online as compared to the you know in-person training because if i will let you know that when we used to look into the eyes of the candidate you know we can directly continue uh, be in touch with them you know who is listening who is not like you know, I remember multiple sessions, people sitting bit behind or somewhere in between, you know, working with the phones. So you get that they know who is paying attention to you, who is not. And, you know, you can simply just play around with a big question or something and get to know whether they are attentive. So how this thing you are tackling in the, you know, this online uh, era of the training? 
Yeah. So for sure, this is a challenge that everyone might face. But for this, as I mentioned, you know, we have some tactics. So we often provide some assessments in between. For example, after every four to five modules of CH, we will provide them a assessment, right, to solve during the sessions. So after every module side by side, there's generally a QA round, question and answer round, where a lot of interaction is done with the participants, right? So apart from that, we give them some task as well, which will help them in learning and also kind of make it more interesting and entertaining for them to learn, right? So some, some small tasks will be thrown up in the between. So for example, in CH, we give them some OSINT task, uh, or you can say some flag-based machines in order to solve it. Right. So not just that, some of the soft skill we can say are also there, like the choice of words which we use in order to get their attention. And voice modulation is also important and a key factor over there. So that you know any important topics or any keywords or terminologies, it will click their mind and it will keep them attached to the topics the entire sessions, right? So we try to make our sessions interactive uh, and we believe it's like a two-way street so that, you know, we will be communicating and they'll be communicating with us so that we can make it more engaging uh, for everyone. Okay, these tactics seems very good, you know. Uh, indeed, they will be keeping the participant attentive and engaging. And lastly, can you tell us the why people prefer or will prefer InfoSec Train for online training as there are multiple other companies as well which is providing the online training in present scenario yeah so that's a really good question so i don't know about other uh, companies uh, but what i do know is we i know about us so what people can get from us is like uh, first of all i would say we have flexible models for online training we are pretty much flexible with our trainings so if part participants want training for 2 hours three hours, four hours, or even of eight hours, we are happily in for it, right? So we can deliver batches as per the customized requirements uh, from the client side. Uh, not only that, uh, secondly, I would say that we have our dedicated SMEs for the subjects. Uh, those are skilled enough for the batches they deliver. They are certified for the courses, uh, you know, which they deliver and they help participants as well to clear the certificates. Uh, Thirdly, I would say, like, you know, as I mentioned before, we do provide cloud infra for the participants. And there's a common issue, you know, which everyone faces, which is called a latency. So for that, we have our own services uh, from multiple regions. So, for example, we have in India uh, for Indian participants, we do have in USA as well. So basically, this will help them to cut down the latency problem. And not only just that, uh, I would say, like, we do go beyond the training as well. Uh, we do have our LinkedIn profile and our YouTube channels where we keep on posting things uh, or posting some Q&As, uh, artis uh, articles and capsules uh, as in like those short clips so that everyone would be able to learn from it, right? So it also helps to learn uh, prerequisites before they can opt uh, any certificate. And we keep on doing webinars and uh, boot camps and master classes for participants to keep them updated regarding this field and give them boost of knowledge. Lastly, I would also like to say that, you know, uh, we just not focus only on uh, certification, uh, you know, or go with exam perspective only. We also actually help participants to land a job in cybersecurity. So we have ran multiple programs uh, that too, you can say free of cost. And we often do that uh, in order to help others to enter into this, you know, uh, great domain. So post COVID, you know, we have launched a uh, for example, job competency program, we call it JCP, right? Which was for everyone. It was open for everyone, whether that person belongs to cybersecurity or not, right? It was open for everyone. So basically what was our aim behind that is we wanted to help those who were struggling during this pandemic, you know, because many people, they lost their job, right? And it was difficult time for people to get a job at that phase. And many wanted to, you know, support their family and they were struggling for the job. So we launched this program. Uh, where we gave them knowledge about information security and help them to prepare uh, for the interviews and, you know, to learn about the technologies and terminologies which you will face in uh, this field, right? And to be very honest, we got a very uh, pretty good response on that, uh, which motivates us to keep doing these things, right? So that was some, you know, some reasons you can say, which keeps yeah. us... Okay. 
you know be one of those mm, that's very amazing to hear about all these initiatives by you the meteorology and everything so this was actually quite nice to know about the eco sector in so thank you sayam for sharing how things are you know managed during this covid period and during the online training thank you so much for joining us thank you